Corey Castle for another five dollars. Thank you, Corey. Uh, so generous tonight. Thank you so much. Wheel of Time writing is at least internally coherent. Can the panel tell me why Rings of Power sister uh, sister sister girls? <laughs> sister <laughs> was, elder. Sister, it's a sister Tits elder. Okay. Just Big Tits McGee. Okay, that's what we're talking Tits about. Mickey. Sister Elder. Okay. I, I was trying to pronounce it out again. Sister Elder was against the expedition. Why did Kemet committed why Kemet committed to sabotage um I know I, I can tell you one thing let me, I'll, I'll me comment first on that I would say that uh there was definitely more dialogue in Wheel of Prime and what dialogue we got in Rings of Power was incoherent it was definitely incoherent mm -hmm. in, in in Rings of Power but what they tried to do in Wheel of Time felt like over justification of all the crap they were doing all right go ahead who was first uh, yeah. I think we're probably going to have the the same thing, but Kemet did it because he wanted to get in Cecile Do Sister Door. Big Tits pants. McGee. Big Tits McGee. Tits yeah, he, McGee that, that's the whole that. reason he was <laughs> yeah. mesmerized with Big Tits. That's that's the whole reason. Now, why was she against it? I don't know. Don't know. We don't that. know. That, that, that's that. That is. I think. I think we could say Rings of Power definitely was worse in the sense of the character development was nothing. Wheel of Time was horrible, but we knew why each of these retards was doing their retarded shit. <laughs> I don't know. I, don't, I, don't I know. know. It's Perrin, Perrin A. Barra may be the single most assassinated character I've ever seen on a television show. It's a contest between him and Matt. Matt, Matt, Matt was yeah. pretty badly assassinated. His, yeah. Not just him, Matt, his entire story uh, was ravaged by a pack of Trollocs in that show. <laughs> okay, but like, Matt... Matt, they at least like try. Said, "Oh, Matt wants to get back to take care of his sisters." Like, I'm, okay, sure. What the fuck? Like, I, I don't believe you. Yeah. But okay, we'll we'll, we'll <laughs> go with that. Perrin, they established that Perrin did not love his wife, and in fact, loved Egwene. Might be secretly Mary gave her Rand. Yeah, Might be secretly definitely. Gave her Rand. Secretly gave. Right. Okay. <laughs> Uh, no, he Mary, really his, loved Rand in episode eight. <laughs> married his wife despite not loving her. Killed her, albeit we think on accident. However, he feels guilty about having done it. And then we find out that Perrin was actively hitting on Egwene enough that both Nynaeve and his wife knew about it. Yeah. And was so in love with her and was so busy hitting on her that he didn't bother to get engaged with his wife until Rand got together with Egwene. Like, Perrin Ebarra is an <laughs> asshole. Like, I'm there's not disagreeing. no redeeming that character. If he was it's, smart it's enough horrible. to talk. <laughs> he was trying to steal Rand's girl, his best friend. Like, well, Archie was, was, was trying to steal Egwene's boy. So it's yeah, definitely, I mean, it's, it's definitely. I, I think it is safe to say though that, um, to Corey's point, the Wheel of Time writing is coherent, but it's coherently retarded. There's, they've spent so much time making it stupid that it hurts our brains. Whereas the Rings <laughs> of Power, it's, it seems, it's also paper thin on Rings of Power that you're rolling your eyes, but it's just like, oh, not. You're going like this, uh, but with real time, you're going, no, no. Adam, I, I have to take issue with the internally coherent yeah, of, of this. The, uh... the, I got three examples off the top of my head. Well, All right, I, go, for I had it. go for it. Um, so Moraine in one of the first scenes sees Leander and extrajudiciously gentle that guy in the prologue. Mm -hmm. Low gain. And then, no, not low gain. It's the, no, the other guy. The guy the with the illusions <laughs> in the first part. Yeah. And, and then she goes to the White Tower in episode six and... The big political drama is what were you doing out there? And, and she completely forgets that she has Leandrin over a barrel. She saw Leandrin commit a crime, but, and she decides to blackmail him with a man in White Harbor. Like, and part of it, I think Alex pointed out that the prologue was a reshoot, so they actually filmed that stupid oh, really? scene later, mm. and that's why it never came up in the tower politics scene. But that's a massive yeah. in, inconsistency. Um, yeah. You have Swan sends Moraine to the eye of the world because the Dark One is weak. And then all in the final two episodes, all they do is talk about how the Dark One's growing stronger. Um, and the big one for me was uh, when they finally reveal Rand is the dragon and they give him those flashbacks. Apparently he had that conversation with Tam on winter night, dragging him through the woods. So Which Rand, we wanted back in the beginning. <laughs> but Rand knew then that whole time 
that Tam wasn't his father, and he did not act like that was a thing. He completely forgot about it until he remembered it um, after, you know, post-nut in episode okay. seven. All right. So, there, there is, if you know the story from the books, you're going to find so many plot inconsistencies that have been thrown up by these stupid little changes that they made to it. So it's That's not why a I said it, story. it makes a difference whether you're a book fan or not, whether, whether you think one is worth it. You're not going to have you're not going to be a book it, but... issue. I think it's a, a prisoner of the moment issue. We, we've all had a year to heal from Wheel of Time. There are, there are plenty of, of there's plenty of nonsense in that in that plot that if you're not doing the rewatches with us, uh, sure. I had a yeah, question. I'm not, I'm not healing. I'm not I'm healing just, at all. I want to circle back to the technical proficiency. Like, which episode was it that had the Aiel Mama in her little fight scene in the prologue? Oh, oh placentious. No, okay. nothing yes. will ever be worse than that scene. Jeez, okay, oh my so God. as goofy as it was, that was the best fight scene in that series. The, yeah, best, it was. the best fight scene in uh, Rings of Power was Gladriel's little, you know, show off session with her. And it wasn't. It, it wasn't. We we spent what thirty minutes breaking that down and how yeah. bad it, it was. Yeah. It was it was horrible. But and so I think on a technical sense, I mean, Yip re- directed the Rings of Power fight scene, so it was incompetently done. Period. But the the reasoning behind the the, the Wheel of Time fight scene. She's doing all these acrobatics while she's having a baby. <laughs> it's like, while she's giving birth. It's so much sillier and so much it's like yeah, they're they're both poorly choreographed fight scenes, but the story justification is so much so worse and time. more more ridiculous in, in real time. But more but for the most part, I agree. I still think that the character assassination is is still worse in, in real time overall. Yeah, the thing I was going to bring up is that I watched like um, two and a half episodes of Wheel of Prime with my brother. And one thing that I found that's really hard when I'm doing my House of Dragon reviews is that it's really hard if you've read any of the source material at all to just forget that you've read it to yeah. like in order to do it. And this is one thing I realized with my brother. It's like I knew the story of what should happen with um, like Rand when they're in... Um, Camelin and he goes to the library or the yeah. library the the library in the inn and meets loyal so in my mind i was like oh that's where he's at but like when my brother watched that he's like where are they and stuff like that and i found i had the same kind of experiences watching rings of power so it's like really just it's so hard to say like which is worse because like we know what should happen and we know what to expect but like honestly when i was watching rings of power it's like I was so lost, and beyond the lostness, yeah. I was bored. Well, and same here. There's one, there's one point that you guys have all brought up repeatedly. I realize, and it, the both shows share it because to Alex's point, one came before the other. One was the test subject. One was the precursor. A lot of rooms, a lot of quick shots of stuff, and a lot of things happening in rooms, hallways, hallways. Yes, no. hallways are the real star of modern fantasy. Yeah, a lot of walking and talking, a lot of feelings in hallways, and. That leads to the to the lack of epicness feel. But to, all right, to close out this point though, and I, I think Corey's gotten their five dollars worth on this one definitely <laughs> from you guys. Uh, but appreciate um, it, Corey. Could di- agree to disagree. You know, hey, but hey, we're, but we're <laughs> all. But the still door. At least she was cute, right? We're all adults That's here. To look we're all at. nerds. That's <laughs> yes. why. You see, it's just a difference of opinion. In the end, we're going to move on. But we all agree it all sucks. <laughs> We're, we're trying to find out which sucked more. That, that. Yeah, we're trying to see which so, is worse. Which is whoever worse wins, which is worse, we all lose. So. Yeah, <laughs> we're, 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 well, I'm winning. I'm making money today. <laughs> but um, no, the I would say that in terms of the the writing and that stuff, I feel as though more damage could be said to be done to Wheel of Time because they they're they're. They took the time to so drastically change all these characters and everything in Rings of Power. I do not disagree with the point that the plan has always been to dismantle Tolkien, who is the foundation of everything. But everything in Rings of Power seems so flimsy, so thin. Yes. It's not deep. It's not thick. It's really literally, I mean, that me, I got it. crazy memory. I remember all this shit. And you guys have been rewatching Wheel of Time, so you're really remembering this shit. The whole climax of the first season was the they make the rings, and I still don't know why. But the point, is, my point is this though: a lot of people are memory holding it from one week to the next. Yeah, 
I'm just I'm just an outlier because I've got partial photographic memory and I remember Same shit man. in a very really, really well, strange way. And you guys are really digging down on the wheel wheel of prime because you've been rewatching it for a year. <laughs> so oh, so I feel sorry for you. Well, it feels like a year, I guess. Hey, but Adam, it's, I, yeah, I, I got a question for you. Maybe, maybe okay. before you, you get a, a um, get your stream of consciousness all the way there. But yeah. uh, I think Draco in the chat makes up an interesting point. Um, and I'm tying this back to how I saw the ratings for Wheel of Prime evolve over time. How kind of initially out of the gate, there was a lot of hype. Well, a lot of people were giving it five stars just to kind of support yeah. it. But it was really kind of that fifth episode that really dropped it for a lot of people. And the finale just ended up cratering what everybody thought, like that the copium ran out. Um, and I could, I could see that in the show uh, being like, Okay, they're making changes, but don't worry, don't worry. It, it'll course correct it, it'll fix. But Rings of Power got fucking ridiculous on the first night when yes. Galadriel jumps off the fucking boat and decides to be like Dory from Finding Nemo and just keeps <laughs> so that, swimming. And that's the whole point. ridiculous when she fought the troll. Don't forget that, the that's yeah. when they got ridiculous. And then, as Pips pointed out, the troll disappeared. <laughs> yeah. That's yes. an insult True. to Paul and Dory. <laughs> so so it, it's kind of like. Um, People like the mask came off, I think, sooner for Rings of Power. People like knew it sucked right away. Whereas people hung out a lot more hope, I think, for uh, for real right. time. I have that, an answer. Is that that, your that could be like, does that make Rings of Power no, worse? Or better. All right, I let me let me try and answer that. I ha I think I have an answer. I think I have an answer. Let's look at the two fan bases. Yeah, that's what's a good going place. On. I was gonna just bring that. Let's start with the fan bases. Right there. Rings of Power. We'll say no. We'll say Lord of the Rings fans. Um. They got their wildest dreams already. They got the Peter Jackson trilogy. Yeah. Yeah. They got it. They're happy. They never needed anything else. Yeah. And when Rings of Power was announced, everyone was going, okay. Man. But then as the details came out, we saw all the stuff. And then the attacks began. The Lord of the Rings fan base rallied as a single juggernaut and yep. said, oh, hell no. We are unified in our disgust for this. When it yep. came to Wheel of Time fans, and I've said this before, you got I've said it with you guys on streams. You've, I'm on the record multiple times saying this. They were their dream. They thought of Bonanza. They were getting an adaptation for their show, their story, their story at last. It was going to happen. They've been begging for it forever. And yep. goddamn you, toxic nerds! You better shut up. Don't you ruin this for us? Don't you tank this for us? This has to work. This has to be a success. If you say negative stuff, it's going to create a negative atmosphere and people are going to rag on it, tear it down, and our show's going to get canceled and you're going to be to blame. We're never going to get our Wheel of Time show. So they developed the cognitive dissonance. At yeah. least some of them did. Some of them are maybe truly idiotic stands. I don't know. I've encountered plenty of them. But even, even Shadowversity tried to get, did bent over backwards to give this show a fair shake. But when he got to episode five with the yeah. soccer, with sad water, he I know, up. I know, sad water. But I was always gonna uh, to, to Dane's point. As soon as they announced the race swaps, that was the first yeah. major red flag. And then they're announcing we're changing this story, that story, we're including this, that. I, it's too many red flags. I know it's gonna be bad. It's gonna suck from the get go. And I made one video, my video that got me some of my first major traction before it started. And I said all the red flags in Wheel of Time, Amazon's Wheel of Time, and. Man, the, the hate I got for that. And then the show came out a week later. And the resurgence on that video of suddenly people coming in comments saying, you were right. You were right. And I was ratioed to the gutter. And then we fought for weeks to pull me out of the negative ratio. In the end, I was in positive territory. But it, that's a difference. It's the fans. The Wheel of Time fans, are they can't handle the fact that they know – when this fails, it could be another 20, 30 years before they get another shot. Good. When the yeah. Lady when B. Lord of the, oh, no, when the Lord of the Rings. Right. Then Lady B. Oh, sorry. When um, Lord of the Rings, I knew it wasn't going to be great. The moment they announced it was going to be a TV series, I was thinking, um, no matter how much money you throw at it, it's still going to look bad on TV. No matter what, stu what studio it is, it Unless you have a big Hollywood budget behind it, it's not going to work as a TV series. And I was absolutely spot on, even though I wasn't um, obviously thinking of the all the stuff that they threw in with it at the time. Mm -hmm. All right, Lady Beagle. 
Yeah, this is something interesting that I think comes in with like the demographics of the fandom of the two properties. Like Lord of the Rings has been around for a really long time. And because of its earlier movie adaptations, you have a much wider age range of the audience. And I think a lot of us that have been talking in our White Cloaks Discord, we've been noticing that we're all kind of about the same age, like between like me and Dana and Alex are kind of the same age. And like we're people that like I didn't read the books in the 90s, but they did. And it's kind of all a certain age. And then I think like the people now that are liking the show, it's like they read the later, if they did read anything, it's like they're the Brandon Sanderson fans and they're the like more vocal, angry, like um, Gen Z, like Tumblr and Twitter and TikTok kids. And so like the vitriol that comes out is so much worse. And they're not, it, they're they're like willing to like rally around the whole racist, sexist isms kind yeah. of stuff. While Lord of the Rings has more of a wide age range. So like the, those voices, those younger kids that complain about this stuff, they are like, they're like a little bit like they can turn down the volume on those people because the older fans will come in where like a wheel of time didn't have that. What do you think about that guys? Like you? I think yeah. there's a great point to be made about the fan bases. And I think you, you all three of you have kind of made it, but because I think there's an additional level, which is Tolkien got big in the United States of America in 1964. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. we're talking about a generational identity. Like, you know, a lot of the younger fans, their parents were reading uh -huh. um, mm -hmm. Lord of the Rings to them. So you know, it's a it's a it's a generational love. It's also somewhat of a national identity, in the sense that you know, the Americans love them some Tolkien to the point that it's you know uh, almost a cultural point of pride. And then I think the other point is, Tolkien fans in general are just old and crotchety. Like, <laughs> you know, Wheel of Time. Like a lot of people got into Wheel of Time because it's like, oh, here's this like you know positive. Like, Email friendly like fantasy series, whereas the Tolkien fandom has none of that shit. They're, get off my lawn! Yeah, get, yeah, get like, the fuck off all right, my Dermy, lawn. Yeah. Go. sausage fest. So, I have two points because we're dealing with the fan base arg thing here, and part of this actually bolsters the wheel wheel prime argument. And that was because of what happened to wheel prime. People like disprove. People like the white cloaks. People like you guys became more prominent. More there and then like this bruce started talking about uh rings of power and he said the only reason he did that was because of wheel of prime yeah secondly quit hating on gen z i'm right here <laughs> but well, what when it comes to tolkien like what happened with tolkien was tolkien created this world very unique very different very words i can't think right now but throughout that, you became closer to Tolkien, and a lot of his fans held on to the idea that, hey, you need to protect Tolkien, because Tolkien protected yeah. it for as long as he could. So when when uh, Christopher passed away, the fans stepped in to t protect Tolkien's work. And when they see somebody take it and do a bastardization, whether that's The Hobbit, even because I have criticisms even of The Hobbit, Absolutely. fans come out in force and get pissed. So when the fans came out for Rings of Power. That wasn't just Rings of Power fans that spoke up. That was Wheel of Primes fans coming out to defend something that they might not have a connection to, uh, but they see what they see the writing on the wall, and they're like, "We're not going to let this happen again." Th th there's a huge overlap between the two franchises. Yeah. I mean, yeah. most people who've read Wheel of Time have have read Ring, um, Lord of the Rings and probably did it first. I know for me, C.S. Lewis and Tolkien. That's kind of where I got to start. Um, Terry Brooks, uh, David Eddings, and it, it actually took me till I was about 16 to start on Wheel of Time. I did Eddings before I did Robert Jordan. Yeah. Me too. I mean, I just read yeah. Wheel of Time like a few Last months year. ago. Uh, she, she's a newbie. Th this, I'm I a think, newbie, is, newbie. As far as um, if we want to set, differentiate, I think, between the fan bases, uh, Alex made a really good point in that um, there is a lot of lefty stuff in Wheel of Time, right? It, mm -hmm. it got it got its start with like, this has got a female Gandalf. It has a prominent role for women. Um, who would have known that, you know, only fast forward 30 years. Hey, Steve. Hey. Only fast forward 30 years and all of a sudden, um, you know, Robert Jordan isn't progressive enough. Yeah, the, 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 funny, I... the funny thing about this fucking show is, though, 
um, what they did is the accidental subversion, right? <laughs> Yeah. They, they they shoot themselves in the foot constantly. This isn't oh, analysis. Both shows. I think both shows equally do that. But they paint Guy Lager to be this grand awesome thing, but dude, then they shoot in the foot. You realize they, they have these scenes where she's just the dumbest thing in the world. It's so fucking. So here here's a quick list of things that they did. Right. So Stepan Sepakus himself, after realizing getting bonded to save his life, he'd have to go gay. Yeah, he'd have. He'd you want to go gay? Die, no, gay. dead. Right, mm. they they undermine Aes Sedai power levels. They say Aes Sedai can like win a fight here or there, and then they get you know chased through by the King of Gildan's people. And then end of the so end good. of the series, so five untrained chicks destroy like ten thousand Trollocs. I know. And he was in God mode at the end of that. <laughs> yeah. The, the All black, right. Real quick. Welcome, black Steve. Tell us the truth. Prophet hey. of the Dragon. Hey, sorry uh, I'm late, man. No problem. No problem. No problem at all. We're happy to have you here. We were hoping you could make it. All right. Why don't you? Why don't you dive in? Uh, uh, have you listened to anything we've said so far? Well, to, to part of why I'm late is I just finally got off work, so I've been on yeah. overnights, and I, I actually fell asleep after a 12-hour shift on my couch. Hey, man, so another wrong with real-world like, ah. problems. Real-world <laughs> problems have to trump YouTube shit. So Always. tell me, Steve, what is worse? The wastewater treatment plant with all the shit in that? Rings of power of Wheeler Prime. Oh, I, I don't know. The plant, the, plant was, the plant was pretty bad last All night. Right. That's why I fell asleep. But, but so, 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 Adam, I have, I haven't. Unfortunately, I haven't got to hear anything. So, I'm going right. in I'll right, give you a quick press. rundown of where we are. Then, um, yeah. we've decided so far. I'm, I'll, let's see where you weigh in on this. We decided that while there is malice on both sides from the production crews, um, we, I think we were. I think the in the end, the panel agreed that the Wheel of Prime malice was higher because of the. Certain the because of Rafe and certain things, whereas the Rings of Power side, there was malice there, but it's more of a malice towards Tolkien and not the work itself. And they're all more interested in really getting their agenda in there, agenda in there as a vehicle, while Rafe was all about really just turning it to shit for for his own purposes. So where do you come down on that? <clears throat> oh, I think that's exactly right. I mean, Rafe uh, a million times. I, at least the 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 two you know clowns that ran the the Rings of Power show pretended to uh, want to please the fans and interact with the fans, um, even though you know it was a bold faced lie. But yeah. Rafe, uh, you know, some of the things that he said is it's just amazing to me that that this dude still has a job when you can interact and say I'm just. You know, you know, the more you complain about this, I'm going to turn these guys gay or, uh, you know, just outright the, the fights he gets in, in, in with people on social media about this stuff. Just just out. And, and then he follows through. That's that's the other thing. He follows through and does what he says. So um, I think that's 100 percent right. Uh, I think there's way more malice when it comes to uh, the actual production with Wheel, Wheel of Time, because, I mean, the showrunners out there being like a dickhead, I mean. At least the other two guys, maybe they're just, I don't know, idiots. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how. It just, I don't feel. I don't. <laughs> they're they are idiots. I, I hate them. I, I hate them because what I watch with my eyes, but I don't feel like they did it on purpose. Is that? I mean, it, even though they did it on purpose, I don't. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's not, different because it's something about bad reboot. We know that they're all idiots and they will trash everything, but they're doing it just to get more powerful in Hollywood, not because they get off on it. There's a distinct yeah. feeling that Rafe is getting off on what. Oh, he's, he's absolutely getting. No, that's exactly. I know. Do you guys right remember the what like they talked about? Like the little girl that sees the Shantan chips coming in, and it's like this. They literally cause a tidal wave and kill this innocent child on the beach. <laughs> and what did what did they say about that day? Like, do you remember? It was horrible. Fuck that little girl. Yeah, that's literally <laughs> what he said. No, no, no. Uh, but it's queer. No, no. So uh, I, I want to raise a quick point. This is going back to the, the subreddit on White Cloaks. But um, right around the middle of this, people started looking back at not just you know what Robert Jordan wrote in his story, but also he gave a lot of interviews. And there was one in particular uh, where he talked about fan fiction. And towards the end of it, he notes that the one thing he really hates and can't abide is the KS slash like erotica fan fiction that uses his characters, right? Uses his characters. And he says, you know, for regular fan fiction, like there's not a whole lot he can do legally. Like if someone wants to write a completely separate story, but take inspiration from his world, 
People and generally, a time. good fanfic writer will say, "None of this belongs to me. I have no rights." And they say, the end I, is, I, I, always, I, "I always have a disclaimer in front of all my fanfics. I put a big ass disclaimer saying, I don't own this. I am not doing this. I'm just doing this for fun." Yeah, that's what I always said. But but he was very protective about his characters more so than he was about his world. And he was basically saying, um, "If I find out that you are making erotica using my characters, I will come down like the hammer of God on you." They'll fire that shit. And then we get we get the leaked script, the the first draft or whatever from uh, from Rafe Judkins, and in it there is a grotesque scene with Rand finger banging Egwene, yep. and it immediately led to speculation on our Reddit that Rafe was probably one of those people who, in two thousand two, was trying to publish erotica fanfic of Wheel of Time on the internet, yeah. and Robert Jordan came down on him. And this is now living out the grudge. Wow. That, that's how much malice we actually felt. And that was a believable story because what else could motivate somebody All right. to yeah, do this? To this is a great Jones window. Work? Thanks for watching, everybody. If you want to get in touch with me, you can reach out to me at therennerd at gmail.com. That emails for channel business only. So I check it on a daily basis. Also, you can find me at the Geeks and Gamers forums under at Roas. And you can find me at Rumble and Odyssey. The Renaissance Nerd. Thank you again. See you next time.